Ta. Good morning. These two sounds brought me to Burma, to Myanmar, in 1987 to study Sandhya, the extraordinary Burmese way of playing the Western piano. So during my many years of being here and studying with and performing with world-class, really world-class musicians in Myanmar, we started a music school, Gitameg Music Center in Yangon and Mandalay, now Gitameg Music Institute. That was in 2003, and the baby is now an adult. So let's go back to this. See? Wow. If you all could take your right hand, raise your right hand, and snap your fingers, there's your C. Your left hand, tap your thigh, your left hand, thigh. And there's your wah. Let's do it again so we do it really well. Here we go. Wah. So let's practice with Gidameg voices. Don't worry, you'll get it great. So let's practice a little bit. Here we go. C, wa, C, wa, C, wa, C, wa. Fantastic. You're perfect. So the C and the wa are the timing instruments and the structure to keep instrumentalists and vocalists together in traditional Burmese music and make extraordinary music. Um, we're going to sing together a song from a beginner set of songs called the Jiu. And this teaches a learner how to respond to the CNY, how to play their instrument, and how to learn to sing and breathe. We'll do it together with Kitame voices, but this song, Tida, actually was a song that was the last king of uh, Burma, of Mima, sang to console himself when he and his family were exiled to India by the British in 1885. Tida, cool, calm. Picture a lake, green, emerald green, in the sunshine, blue sky, the water shimmering. There are lotuses on the side of the lake or the side of a riverbank. Silvery, sandy, they're birds, terns, cranes, and you can hear them call. And the butterflies come down and dive into the lotus flowers to eat the lotus seeds. Those of you that know the lyrics, please sing. Those of you that don't know the lyrics, please sing. <laughs> and all of us, we're going to do our CNY. You're going to accompany me. And if you feel like you don't know the words, it doesn't matter, hum. Ready? Sinewa, 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 Yeah. 
Divisions we make in our minds separate us from them, our music from their music. And by doing that, we shut down our ears, we sometimes ignore, we avoid. So this is really, really important in childhood. It protects us. It tells us who we are. But as adults, can we learn to listen beyond the borders of our ears and our minds? What if we, in the 21st century, learn to listen creatively, practicing as an art, listening that's active, in a very equal, unprejudiced, empathetic, and sharing way? It's sort of as if you had a private karaoke that you create for yourself all day, all night. Myanmar language has an amazing two, two verbs, two words, meaning to understand. So the first, nalele, is to wrap your ears around an idea or an experience. Picture the second, the bo baute. Baute, right? So your consciousness explodes with new understanding. Your habits are pierced by new realizations. So with that in mind, let's wrap our ears around this. or the koel bird. So, can we try to imitate it? Let's try. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> You're great. So, by imitating it, what did you notice? Where does the bird sit in your memory? When was the last time you heard it? Did you remember it from childhood? So, for a brief instant, we were in the world, the sound world, of the koel bird, of the oa bird. That imitation, that ability and freedom and comfort in imitating is something all children do all over the world. But sometimes adults make fun of them. But if we really think about it, what has the child connected with that we have lost? Can we find new ways to hear magic in ordinary sounds and in forgotten music? So I'd like for us to wrap our ears again around another tune. And this time the tune will come from screens and the audio. <laughs> So before we talk about it, let's sing together with Gitamek voices and the words will be on the screen. <laughs> Lullaby in Jingpo language, sung and composed by my former student, Lapai Azed. 
So a song like this, unless we're really listening to music from Kachin or other group cultures, um, it flies by us. We don't really notice it, pay attention, and we're the ones who are who are lost or bereft of, of that experience. By entering into Azet's voice, her breath, her silences, her tone, the way she moves her tone up and down, we're singing in the Jingpo, not around it. And by doing that, we connect with her tender feelings for her child. So our last singing experience is not from Myanmar. It's from the Democratic Republic of Congo in Africa, among the Mbuti people in the Aturi forest. So what I'd like us to do is remember your Myanmar wa. It's no longer a Myanmar wa. Your wa is now a percussion instrument from the Congo. Can we try that? Maybe a little bit. Yeah, good, great. So. This song, Ama Ibu Oie, we're going to hear it three times. So first, Gitamic voices will sing, so you can hear the melody. Then we'll all sing together with our percussion instrument. And then Gitamic voices will sing in the way that the Mbuti people sing it. This is a chant, calling people together out of the forest to come into the village and sung for as long as it takes to reach community. Sometimes that's a half hour. So picture yourself. In a, in a village, and you're calling your friends, and they've gone way out to cut some trees down or whatever, or talk together and sing, and you're calling them back. So put a lot of um, spirit into it. OK, uh, here we go. Mm. So did you get that? It's two phrases that repeat. We'll try it again. And just watch my hand. That'll be a little bit more of a, a determining moment for your, for your um, percussion instrument. So let's do that again. I'll do this four times, and then we'll all come in with Amaibu Oie. Here we go. Amaibu Oie. Amaibu Oie. Great. So this time we're going to listen to how it's sung by the Mbuti people, which is the lines will be stacked, on one on top of each other, as if you're watching people go up and down escalators, maybe at Myanmar Plaza or New York City, it doesn't matter where. Um, and, and the choir will sing. If you feel like joining, please join. And let's all use our percussion instruments for them, because they need it too. So, you ready? Amai, 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 amai. to each other. Our voices overlap. We've reached community in this room at Strand Hotel and TEDx. The Greek philosopher Socrates, Sobayedi, said that he never traveled. Why? Because he said, wherever I go, I take myself with me. So it's true. We are who we are. We can't change that. But we can listen beyond who we are to who they are, to what they know, and how they know it. I will never be a Myma Sandia player, but playing Myma Sandia changed my life as a musician, changed my listening, and changed the lives of those around me. So 
We all have judgments. It's a habit. We're all, we all do that all the time. But we can pierce our habits by creative listening and practicing listening as an art. And by so doing, we can awaken ourselves to extraordinary beauty and deeper meaning in just about everything. So thank you very much. Let's give a big hand for Vidame Voices. Thank you.